There is a secret with being ginger and receding. Not a lot of many people know. But being both ginger and receding actually means I'm single. <laughs> Don't mind it, Liverpool. Don't mind being single, right? I think there's a lot of social pressure to be in a relationship, especially when you're young, right? How it describes that pressure. I don't mind being single 90% of the time. 90% of the time, don't mind being single. The only time it bothers me is every single one of my friends are all in relationships. Both of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, they've been together a while, and I don't be grudging that, but they can be, be quite patronising. A couple of weeks ago, both my friends pulled me to one side to give me some advice. And both my friends turned around to me and said, Son. <laughs> you're 26. It's about time you've got yourself a girlfriend. You need to be more proactive. You need to be a little more romantic. I'll take issue with that because I'm a very romantic man. My barber <laughs> closed down six weeks ago. And out of loyalty, I won't go anywhere else. So that's why I'm letting this air just exist like this. <laughs> that's commitment. It's not the most romantic gesture I've ever done. Most romantic gesture I've ever done happened in 2012. Met the love of my life in Malaga, a waitress. Isabella Maria Rodriguez. <laughs> she was from Bolton. She was Spanish, like right? she was Spanish. But she, she didn't speak a word of English. But I thought I'd be romantic, ask her out in Spanish. Because I can speak Spanish because I've got a GCSE in it. <laughs> B. Oh, <laughs> well, I'll ask it out in Spanish, right? I'll show, I'll show you how I ask it out, and I'll translate it for those who can't speak Spanish. So I went up to her, went right up to her, and went, Hola. You all right? <laughs> <laughs> um, Hola. I'm a scared of. Hiya, can I help you? Mi los ojos <laughs> es muy bonitas. <laughs> Puedo secarte. Shh. Your eyes are beautiful. Can I take you out? Manchester. It puts people off coming into the city. So what I've done 
got funding from the tourist board, I've set up the very first and the very only Mancunian self-defence class <coughs> for people new to Manchester. Now included in your ticket tonight is lesson one in Mancunian self-defence class. Now the target market is students. Because every year in September we get an influx of students coming to Manchester University, Manchester Metropolitan University, Salford University. That's two and a half universities. <laughs> <laughs> first lesson when you first off the train is the chameleon method. It's all about blending in with the locals. It's how to walk like a Mancunian. <laughs> now step one is your face. You're going to want to look like you've just spat out a hot chip. <laughs> Step two, you need to be able to dodge your tax on the left or right. That's where that bit comes from. <laughs> And to balance the shoulders going from side to side and your feet, they go from 12 o'clock to 10 to 2. And then you roll them all in, you roll them all in, you have the angry face, you swim the shoulders, feet at 10 to 2. And every so often you say, yeah mate, play Wonderwall. <laughs> but the only reason why I'm doing it though, there's another reason why I'm doing it, is because I need to keep fit. So on a serious note, for the moment, I have uh, I've had recently been diagnosed with chippy tits. It's <laughs> <laughs> quite serious, right? It's quite complicated what happens, right? But what, what, what's happened is I've developed tits from the overconsumption of chips. I thought it was quite rare, but Looking at some of the audience tonight, <laughs> I thought we'd have to a support group. <laughs> I need to lose, I need to lose weight, right? Because my family are all fit, my family are all quite athletic. I was drilled in at a very early age. I had to play a sport. But I couldn't get on the footy team, so I had to join the rugby team because I was looking for players. To so join this rugby team, 13, and uh, rugby first match, rugby's 15 aside. 12 of us turned up, and I was on the bench. <laughs> but he was obligated to play me, he was obligated to play me because we dad paid subs so they had to play you right so we're getting beat 77 nil with four minutes to go it's going to be a tough one right but the reason why I was getting beat is because we were 13 and the size difference the lads the puberty at different rates so none of our lads had gone through puberty all their lads had to the size difference the biggest lad on our team the biggest lad on our team he had a spot <laughs> The smallest lad on their team had a mortgage. <laughs> so we'll come on for like four minutes to go. And the, the manager says, just go on the wing, stand out of the way, don't let the goal. So I went on and they had this lad on their team who was massive, he had legs out here, and he was just running down the pitch. And all our lads were just, you just go through, mate, you just go through. <laughs> that was the last man. I thought, I wasn't going to let him through. And I thought, nah, if I bring him down, every chance I could start next week against Stockport. So I brace myself, I'm going to bring him down, I brace myself down. He's running towards me. I look him dead in the eye. He ran towards me and I ran towards him and I leapt at him. And he caught me. He <laughs> <laughs> panicked me like a car. <laughs> well, I got, me some, I got me some stick up for my teammates. Now. I'll just leave you this. I got me some stick for my teammates. Now that stick manifested itself most in training. So at the end of each training session, we used to have a separate side touch rugby match for a bit of fun. And each week, I'd try and get on one of the teams, I'd come over, and they'd go, we're not having him. It's shit. You have him. I know it's shit. We had him last week. You fucking have him. Which sounds harsh, but it did prepare me for my mum and dad's divorce. 